Contrary to popular belief, high-achieving university students were not born high-achieving. These students typically possess study habits that mean that they are focused, they are determined, and they are very disciplined in what they do on a day-to-day basis. I am a graduate from four UK universities. I have an undergrad, a BSc, I have a master's, I have a PhD, and I also have a PGCE. I was constantly surrounded by high achieving students at these universities. So these are 10 academic study habits that I've noticed from both myself and these high achieving students that will help you excel this academic year. The first is impeccable time management. If you knew me, I had a planner, every single year, brand new one that I would get. I had my diary um, on my phone, I'd have my calendar on my laptop. I was in control of my time. And this is so important as it means I wasn't missing deadlines, I wasn't stressed out, I wasn't doing last minute cramming. And I used my time well, both to balance my social life and having a good time, but also balancing my academic requirements. The second is active participation in class. You know that that one student that's always putting their hand up and always asking questions and the one that always annoys everybody else? That person's high achieving for a reason. They're high achieving because they're asking questions, they're engaging with their materials, they are ensuring that they actually understand they're not getting away they're not leaving this room until they understand that is quite selfish but actually it's really admirable it means that they're not just passively sitting there listening to information they're active in their learning this will help them retain information as well and you know again when you see someone you're like oh, they haven't really studied much it's because they're asking questions in class which helps retain the information in their memory which means they're actually they're not needing to revise and study as much the third is regular attendance, not missing classes. There were, I didn't enjoy every single lecture. Some of my lecturers, I, I'm sorry to say, but were, were really bad. The lecture notes were really, they were basically couldn't read them. Um, the lecturers sometimes didn't even turn up, like, or they came late. And these are, you know, this is at top university. So I'm not saying that every lecture is perfect and you're going to learn a crazy amount. But this is about self-discipline and, you know, being being in attendance and being present is important in the working world. When you go out there and you're working, you have to be there, whether you love your boss, whether you don't, whether you love your job, whether you don't, you have to attend. And so this is a key skill that I would always make sure that during my PhD, I didn't have to go to the lab every single day, but I made sure to get in at nine every single day. Again, didn't have to. I got in at nine every single day and I left at five every single day. And that was what I told myself that I was going to do. And that is what made me have that discipline that I have now. The next thing is that high achieving students don't just rely on what's given to them in terms of their resource. So if you're given a lecture and you're told to read these books, um, and most students would just kind of fix on the, fixate on those and that's your focus. But high achieving students go beyond. They'll try to engage with different resources. They'll go and do their own research to find some more literature. They'll go and speak to people. They speak to their tutor. They go and speak to the professor or the lecturer and they'll try and find more information than what was given to them just to be one step ahead. Remember that high, for high achieving students, I'm speaking for myself, for high achieving students, it's, it's kind of always a competition, um, which, wasn't, which isn't always healthy, but it is a competition. So if everybody else has this, I don't want that. I want that, right? And that's kind of how they think. And so what that means is when it comes to like writing an essay or uh, being in an exam, we have information that the average student doesn't. And that's what makes you so high achieving. The next is effective note taking. A high achieving student has their own way of note taking. There isn't really one set away, but they have a way of note taking that they do consistently. So when they turn up, <laughs> when they, I'm speaking by myself, when I used to turn up to a lecture, I wouldn't just turn up with some, you know, some paper and just kind of write away. I had a way that I'd write. I had colors that I would use. I'd have like um, kind of asterisks and different kind of methods to show what I don't understand, what I want to highlight. Um, and this meant that I was taking notes in an effective way that when I came to revise, I knew what was the important parts of information, what questions did I have, did she say something that was really important and I put a, a, a massive star, that would be there and that's consistent through all of my lecture notes. There's a note taking method for lecture notes called the Cornell note system and I've actually made a template for that so I'll leave it down below, I'll put it here on the, on the screen as well for you to see. But it's a nice way of laying out your notes where you're writing sort of the, the kind of outline topic on one side and then more detail inside and some questions and things like that so it works really well and I've got a free template for that so I'll leave it here as well. The next thing that high achievers do is that they employ active learning techniques, not passive ones. Let me explain. Passive techniques are techniques such as like grabbing a highlighter and just highlighting away passively, highlighting everything. Okay, great. 
what high achieving students do is they take that one step, you know, one step ahead. So what they'll do is they'll make flashcards um, from the questions that they've read or from the notes that they've read. They will use exam papers from the beginning, not at the end, the day before. They'll be using exam papers from the start of their revision and from the start of kind of getting the exam notes. So it's really important that you're taking active revision, active steps of studying and not just passively kind of swallowing information that isn't being retained in your memory. So high achieving students review their notes regularly, something that you may or may not know. If I were to get notes, let's say September, October, I got a lecture note in October. I'm not not seeing it until May when the exams come. I probably, so in September, in October, I would have done um, kind of a review on it and just gone over it, whatever. Then maybe in December, I would have gone over it again. And then maybe like in Feb or March, I would have gone over it again, just a quick like skim through. And then when it comes to the exam in May, I've gone over it a few times that it's really been reinforced in my memory. And so, um, yeah, I, I can do well with it without revising and being kind of, I guess, crowded with so much information. So reviewing regularly really helps with um, retaining information and not needing to cram later on. High achieving students try to maintain a healthy study environment as much as possible. Now I know this is a tough one because you might live at home and you might have your parents and, and siblings and it might just be a bit difficult to study, but you can find another environment that is conducive to studying. So one of the things that I used to do is I'd go to the library and I would just have a routine where I'd go every morning on a Tuesday because I didn't have lectures on Tuesday, for example. I'd, go to, I'd still have that this discipline. I wouldn't just stay in bed all morning. I'd go in the morning and study in the morning and I'd, have, I'd create that perfect environment for me to study and then I'd go to my lecture in the afternoon. So even if it doesn't work well to, have to, like, to be at home because of your family or whatever, find somewhere else that you can go and study. There are so many like free study spots, the British Library, like so many places where you can study that is free and that is quiet and controlled. But even forget like the actual environment, even things like getting rid of your phone, that is a discipline that's really important and that high achieving students um, you know, maintain. Don't, I used to get my phone and put it under my pillow just so it was far and out of reach so I couldn't see it. And especially these days, phones are such a distraction. Having it next to you means that you're halving the time, you're halving the productivity that you could possibly do. The next thing that high achieving students do is they're not afraid to ask for help. So I'd like to, I think this is a tough one because I think actually you get two kinds of high achieving students. One is you'll get one that feels so egotistical that they don't want to ask for help because they, they just feel like they seem, you know, it makes them sound silly and that they don't know or don't understand. So that's the one type. But the type that actually does really well um, is the type that asks for help. So it's the type that puts their hand up during the lecture. It's the type that books meetings with their tutor and with their professor outside of the required hours. Those are the ones that will achieve the higher grade because they are seeking help when they need it. They're not waiting to fail or they're not waiting to kind of be in a situation where it's you know really hard to actually get the help. They're getting it as early as possible when the lecturers and their professors don't have as much workload compared to towards the end when there's assignments due and when there's essays and exams due. And last but not least, high achieving students, believe it or not, really take care of themselves in terms of taking breaks. I think that high achieving students have a bad reputation for maybe working all day, working all night, but actually the, the students that I know that do really well are really balanced. Um, me and my friends that did amazingly at university, we were not studying all day and all night. We had a great time. We used to go out all the time. Like we were very, very balanced. And I think that's really important for like sanity, essentially. You need to make sure you're getting enough sleep. You need to make sure you're exercising, eating the right things. One of the things that we used to do in my, um, in my student halls with my two friends um, is we would like rotate. So there was one day that I would cook and we'd all eat another day that that my friend would cook and all eat, other, other person would cook and all eat. So it means that we'd all get a home cooked meal um, and not just a takeout or just takeaway kind of thing. Um, but it's kind of rotating it and it's just a nice way of firstly just having a good time with your friends but also um, eating good food. So try to find ways to ensure that you're not just focusing too much on your studies, that you're um, neglecting other aspects of your life because the two go hand in hand. If you're happy, and you're healthy, then you'll do better at university. But remember that there's not one shoe that fits all. So the points that I've mentioned today may not may or may not work for you, but this is something that I've noticed as a high achiever myself and 
being surrounded by high achievers these are kind of the habits that we have that we don't even think about honestly the points i mentioned today i don't even think i thought about it at university it honestly becomes a habit that you just get so used to doing that yeah it just becomes natural after a while so think about how you can implement some of these in your day-to-day -day life at university if you're starting this year or you're starting a new academic year best of luck i'm sure you'll do amazingly um, and if you enjoyed this video don't forget to subscribe to see more from me and i'll see you in my next one bye